when you come here to this environment, there's almost one person for every computer on the teams. If you can break into a system that someone is actively sitting in front of looking for you breaking into it, then you know your skills are going to improve and the bar's a little higher for you. So if you can come to this environment and learn and build and break into systems that are being defended against you know 24 7 uh, then when you go out and do real penetration tests you're in a much better position because typically you may not have someone sitting right in front of it you know killing your processes when you're breaking in so it's a great experience for the penetration tester or the hacker I was taking pictures of you guys taking pictures and then I just took some pictures around here and I hid my badge and I, I that one picture right there I think it had a password on it I'm not really sure I'll go back and check the future evolution of this type of competition, I think, is, is very bright. We now have a national administration that is interested in computer security as a field. Uh, there have been various statements coming from the new administration to focus attention on computer security, web-based security, uh, all kinds of network uh, security aspects. I could take my own case as typical. I spent 27 years as a professor of computer information systems. I taught a lot of different programming languages, about a dozen of them I think altogether, and databases and systems analysis and design, but I didn't get into computer security until the last year of my teaching career. Um, computer se security was very often an afterthought when you developed systems in the past. Today we know it has to be front and center. You need to be talking about computer security when a system is being designed, the first meeting. You want to do a joke? Yeah. yeah. We could do a joke for them. Uh, where's my drive? That drive. Right there? Yeah. Files. Here, we'll do one of the joke programs. So basically, we're having uh, a Trojan called Poison Ivy. It basically melts into the system and reverse connections back to us. So unless the students are using egress filtering on their firewalls, our shell will always come back to us. That's in case they block us from coming into them. That allows us to view their screens, upload files, basically do whatever we want as if we were on the system itself. If they have a VNC client running, they'll literally have a remote version of that desktop on theirs and they can move around and do whatever they want on it. Because they were doing that earlier, we were watching them. They'd be, they'd be typing in a command and right as they're about to finish the command, we'll just type in a bunch of gibberish so it won't work. Or they'll be trying to install something and right when it gets to like 99%, we cancel it just to make them angrier, I guess. These people are all going to end up either in government employment or in the private sector defending the networks that control your bank account, that control your healthcare records. And so the overall benefit to the community at large is you have better prepared defenders having gone through this exercise because they've been blooded, they've been stressed, they've been through this, uh, and they understand that, again, it is manageable, it is possible to continue on, and just because a hacker gets in, it is not the end of the world. I opened up 8 port 8080. Okay. Index up to HP. Please, Monkey. Go before that. Is your firewall slow? Yes. It is not my birthday today. Uh, that was a that was a late night uh, creation from last night that we came up with just to uh, as a distraction to to go over. It would have worked better if we could have used that to pull off something else um, to distract the teams and further. Did we? We got something we wanted. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I guess we got something else we wanted. I think the the hands on defending a network in this environment is some of the best training that you could give people who are going out into the field because I think what it does is it really condenses what you can learn over maybe the stretch of a couple of years of configuring systems, administering, administering systems, and securing them and condenses that down into a couple of days. I mean, they're under attack constantly and have to react to attacks all the time so they can take that experience and now go apply it into the real world and know that hey I want to configure this system in such a way to prevent these attacks from happening because guess what I saw 10 or 15 of these attacks in an hour once and here's how you know I configured the system to be resilient against it. So if we had a thousand people on a system today and the system crashed like it did and we lost them all, which is highly likely, there's a half a million dollars. Boom, out the door. As this continues to grow, there'll be a few things I think will, will come along with it. More school participation will be great, so we have other schools aside from the four we had today. Um, and more sponsorships, and maybe even more real live business scenarios. So am I supposed to tell them how we did it now? Magic. Um, a lot of social engineering on my part.
I wasn't really all that effective on the computer parts, but I was out here psychologically warfaring you guys all the, the entire weekend. One thing I've noticed is that most schools today really don't teach security at this type of level. It's always more of, of a practical piece, a more background or more theory as opposed to what's really going on in the industry and just in general. On the flip side, for us, for someone like myself who's always looking for hiring security guys, this is a great way of cutting your teeth and really finding out who's passionate about security, what type of field they they're really want to work in, what the skill sets are, and just really what their personality's like and if they're a good mix for the security. Like from the beginning, I was on your internal networks the entire time. You guys are focusing on protecting yourselves from the outside, but if you have somebody right there in with you, you have to just, like with the APs, you have to know they're there. You have to know this stuff is there to protect it. You mentioned the poison ivy. Um, by now, most of you guys are catching on to that, and you guys know which processes to kill. I found out a new little trick today. If we embed into other processes that you guys execute, such as your TCP viewer, your command.exe, or any other things that you guys need to run to monitor us, you guys keep relaunching my Poison Ivy for me. I noticed every time I would walk around, obviously most of you know me by now, but every time I would walk around, you guys would like form a human wall between me and anything approaching a computer system in your network, so that was cool. So when I did come around with a camera and a brown badge, though, as a, as a, as a verified, bona fide, fully allowed visitor, even then you didn't allow me in to do most of what I was doing. I got a couple of good shots on Team 4 because they were busy concentrating on their systems, and, and I got some shoulder surfing shots. Uh, but what you didn't notice was that while I was doing that and you were concentrating on me, we had another guy with a much better camera walking around who was taking the, the real shots. So I was really just the distraction person for that whole time. In the short term future, cybersecurity is going to elevate in importance for a handful of reasons. One is as the budget shrinks, staff shrinks, which means you have fewer geeks watching the doors, which means you have to protect and secure more with fewer people. It's very hard to do. Um, as part of the whole global financial meltdown and other things that are going on, you're seeing an increase in attacks. So the attack range is getting larger, the talent pool for defending is getting smaller, and networks are getting more complex. Seth and I spent probably three or four hours on Moodle, and uh, since you hadn't changed the default administrator password, we were logged in as administrator and figured out we could, there were places where we could embed HTML in Moodle. So anyone going to the main Moodle page ran HTML of our choosing. And I mean, that's, I mean, you're owned at that point. If we can make your browser run HTML or JavaScript, it's game over. Seriously, I want to reiterate what everybody's saying. Know your network. That's number one. And last but not least is SCADA. You guys think it, thought it was, I don't know how everything got set up so that you guys were powered in, but SCADA controls power in the real world. So if so, some hacker turns off power, he's turning off a grid. That means, that doesn't mean just your monitors. So you might think that's unfair now, but SCADA systems are incredibly important. We'll have a lot of fun just playing around with the kids. Uh, we'll gather all that information, we'll do stuff to keep them on their toes, but every now and then we'll throw in a joke program or something, so they get a good laugh, we get a good laugh, and then we have a lot of fun. Uh, second place team, was uh, Team 2, George Washington University. It really is going to grow, it's really going to progress, depending on, you know, how many more sponsors we get, how many more schools we can get into it. You know, the bigger the better. You know, the more competition, the more you can learn, the more stuff you can work with. So the University of Pittsburgh is representing our region in the fourth national. Congratulations. <laughs> always great to have more competition, more of a challenge. I really hope that more institutions will become more involved in this. I mean, it's such a great opportunity. Why wouldn't you want to play? I took a picture with their laptop with me hacking it and then I sent it to their screen and I took another picture with me next to the laptop again with my picture right on the laptop and we just kept doing it. So I figured eventually they'll do something back. So yeah. it doesn't matter. Well, as far as I know, you're a crybaby. Ah, uh, yes. No. I'm a crybaby. Well, it would deeply hurt your feelings. No.
Give another smile. Come on, happy, happy hacking. We're not getting any. Awesome.